Hey, how's it going, my friend? This is James Randhouse, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about on observing, recognizing, and acting in the world. And this is part of a larger video series on the simple science of invincibility. So I'm really excited what I got to bring to you today, guys. Now, our task is really threefold here. As you can see, we're talking about observing, recognizing, and acting. I'm going to show you how all three of these things work together. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. Now, more often than not, self-help materials teach you to focus only on the positive and pretend that the negative isn't there. Now, the reason why I wanted to start off with this is because we've already talked about the importance of focusing on the positive. And focusing on the positive is great, but it's not great to not be grounded in reality. And pretty much what I mean by that is, like, if you see something isn't really going right in your life, like, say, you know, you're in a lot of debt and stuff, you don't want to just ignore the fact that you have, like, a lot of debt going on. And that's not going to be very helpful to you. And if anything, it can make the problem a lot worse. You can end up, like, really accumulating even more debt accumulating interest even and things of that nature so we never want to ignore the problems that you have or ignore the things that are going wrong we want to acknowledge them but not put them in a bad light just realize that this is something that we need to correct and that we need to fix so there's a very keen difference between recognizing something isn't working and then just being negative about it now the real truth of the matter is that you can't change the outside world by pretending it isn't there but you can choose how to react to it how to interpret it and actively change it in the objective reality that you desire. Now, how to react to it. Now, I know it can seem very easy to just have something happen to you and just give like an automatic, almost unconscious response. But for for those of us that are a little bit for those of us that are a little bit more developed, that was my alarm that I just rang. What happens is we can take something that happened to us and be able to interpret it in such a way where we're able to like derive benefit from that situation or that particular circumstance which pretty much goes hand in hand with interpreting it because you if you choose how to react to something you can also choose how you interpret it as well and by making those two conscious decisions you're able to change it into the thing that you actually want in the first place so say the sit you're in a situation where you where you're in a lot of debt right now you can choose to react to it in such a way where perhaps you can go out and like build a business or maybe you already have a business and you can figure out ways to like expand your business so that way you're making a lot more money than you have debt and you could just pay that debt off and not worry about it ever again so there's ways to um take negative circumstances and negative situations and derive benefit out out from them now focusing on and actually changing the real world also has the added benefit of programming the conscious mind not to be afraid of reality now reality can be a very scary thing if you think about it like we really don't know if we're gonna wake up tomorrow or if we even will like we or we could wake up tomorrow and we could just walk out on the street and we could just get hit by a submarine out of nowhere like life can be really random like that so it makes a lot of sense for us to be somewhat afraid of reality but if we live in that petrified type of fear of reality what happens is we end up just not being the most effective people that we could possibly be but when you go out and you're taking action and you're doing things and you're conf confronting reality head on you're able to tell yourself consciously and unconsciously like you know what i can handle whatever gets thrown at me even if it's the craziest thing ever like i'm prepared for it i can do it i can make it happen now facing now mark joiner said facing reality is the ultimate destroyer of fear and ignoring reality foster fears and i definitely believe there's a lot of truth to that you see when we're able to like face our fears head on and stuff begin to realize like they're not, it's not as scary as it once was like for example right say like you're driving for maybe if you if you already have a driver's license then you probably remember what it was like when you started driving for the first time right it was probably like probably one of the scariest things of your life you get all these different controls going on and stuff you got foot pedals a steering wheel you gotta like shift gears and stuff there's a lot going on when it comes to driving the car and then you got all these other cars that are around you and stuff like there's a lot that's going on but over time as you keep on facing it and you keep doing it and stuff you begin to realize like it's really not as scary as you thought it was in fact it actually can even be kind of fun and some people even get paid to drive you know nascar right so that's really what it comes down to when we talk about facing reality but when you ignore reality when you ignore the things that are bothering you you ignore the things that you know that you need to fix what happens is that your fear of it becomes a lot more greater than it would have been had you just handled it and nipped it in the bud
Now, for your notes, I want to leave you with a few more things to kind of keep in mind. First off, you want to be comfortable with what you know and what you don't know, because at the end of the day, none of us is going to know everything and anything there is to know. We all have our strengths. We all have our weaknesses. And it's just a matter of us being honest with ourselves about what it is that we're good at and having the courage and having the um, the the humility so to speak to be able to go out there and that's cutting the contact other people that can help us with the things that we're weak at also secondly you want to make a distinction between what's the in your ability to change and what isn't in your ability to change because yes we may feel um inclined to go out and change everything there is that we could possibly want to change but at the end of the day there's only certain things that are within our power to change and there's only in the things that it isn't so you want to be clear on that Next is that you want to be single minded in your actions. And pretty much what I mean by that is that when you when you actually decide to act like after you're done deliberating and you decided, all right, this is the course of action I want to take. You need to just go and you got to act with one mind. You can't be acting and doing one thing, but thinking about something else or act in such a way that you end up like you're doubting yourself while you're acting yourself. This makes your action a lot less effective. You're better off like once you decide you're going to do something, do it and do it to your and do it 100% to the best of your ability. Next, you want to be unbiased in your observation. And essentially what I mean by that is like when you're going out and you're looking and you're facing the world and stuff, you want to be able to like accurately look at things and see things for what they are. You want to take away any like filters or any sort of like prejudices that you may have and stuff and just be able to see things for what they are because in order to like observe information in the real world you need to have like information that's not tainted and you taint information once you start bringing in your own judgments your own preconceived notions of what things should be sorry that's my alarm again and it end up you end up being a lot less effective as a result now, finally, I like you to write some write some of your own ideas. Like when you hear about the idea of observing, recognizing, acting in the world, what are like some other corollaries that you could um co that coincides with this idea on observing, recognizing, and acting? So once again, guys, I just want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys got a lot of value out of this. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button down below right now. And also hit that bell icon. So that way you'll be notified as soon as I drop the next video in this series titled on learning to love what you want and the habits that lead to what you want. That's going to be the final video in this series. So I really look forward to bringing that to you. Hope you guys got a lot of value out of this and I will see you next time. Bye for now.